number 25. Okay. Dad slowly became blind. Didn't have a lot of entertainment. It limited the Strauss waltzes. We'd be in Vegas and he didn't like the shows. Uh, the restaurants were too gaudy and that. But he always loved jokes. And they made him Toastmaster blind of the avocado group in Escondido. His house was surrounded by three acres of avocados. Sorry, you can't do that with your microphone. Oh, oh yeah. And he, uh, with the avocados, he ended up as Toastmaster for an avocado group that loved his stories. Dad was a good speaker, if you could stop him. <laughs> so I ran out of jokes. He ran out of jokes. He'd call me. I ran out of jokes. I started buying joke books and so on. And that ended up my life going in the direction that I just love jokes. And I heard of a bar restaurant near my house that had a joke night. $25 prize, but I pushed it off of the business. I couldn't get there. When I get there, it's a $100 joke night. And it's a great idea for anyone listening, better than karaoke in that. The judges are any three customers, and all you have to do is write down the punchline of the funniest joke you've heard so far. So if no, the rooster ate it was the funniest joke, but now you got a funny one. Uh, where did you get that crappy hairdo is now the funniest one. You just write that down. So it's easy to do, and people were just throwing out jokes. And uh, so when my turn came, I had read this in the paper, but anyone knowing jokes, it is not how you read them in the paper or book. It's how you tell them to people. So St. Peter is addressing a huge crowd in front of the pearly gates that for some unknown reasons, we have too many people in too few places. So I'm going to ask you that died in your sleep peacefully, step aside, you'll have eternal rest. But those of you that had traumatic deaths that are still uptight, come and tell me one at a time and we'll place you. So the first man comes in, St. Peter asks, you had a traumatic death? Yes, I still can't believe it. Well, tell me the story. I've been married five years, worked downtown, started suspecting my wife was fooling around when I was at work and it ate at me so much that one noon I decided to go home unexpectedly and see what's happening. I get there, I left the key, I gotta pound the door. I'm on the 13th floor of this condo. And finally, she opens the door, and she's still in her negligee. It's noon. She looks flushed. I barge past her into the bedroom. Nothing. Under the bed, nothing. The closet, nothing. I'm about to apologize when I look out on the balcony. It's a beautiful sunny day, but I see hands hanging from my balcony. And sure enough, there he is hanging from the balcony, and I in a rage stomp on his hands until he finally has to let go, and I watch with satisfaction as he falls 13 stories. But then there's movement. And he slowly gets up. He hit a bush. It broke his fall. I need something heavy quick before he moves out the chair. It's not heavy enough. The bed, I can't get it through the door. The refrigerator. I push the refrigerator up to the railing. And as I push it over, I have a heart attack. And that's why I'm here. Well, my son, that, that really is a traumatic death. Welcome to eternal bliss. St. Peter calls the next one in and says, I just heard a story that was incredible. And this guy says, I can't believe mine either. Well, let me hear it. I work downtown, a little overweight, work out at lunch at home. It's so beautiful, and I live in this beautiful condo on the 14th floor. I decided to work out on the balcony, so I got this 150 bench press up, and I'm proud of myself when a gust of wind blows me over the balcony. I figure this is it. But in my flailing, I had grabbed the balcony below me, and I'm thanking God for saving my life when this guy, I think he's crazy, he comes running out, jumps up and down on my hands, screaming stuff at me. I finally got to let go. This is it. This is it. I am only stunned. I can move. I'm about to get up when I get hit by a refrigerator. And that's why I'm here. Oh, St. Peter said, these are two. I'm going to have to take a break. Welcome, my son. Half an hour later, St. Peter comes back. That's the next guy. And then St. Peter warns him, I had two stories so incredible. I don't know how many more I can take. What's yours? Well, mine's incredible too. Here I was naked in this refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> they won me a hundred dollars, but I was in a tie, so I had to repeat the joke. And this was my biggest compliment. Two beautiful blondes come over. There's about 50 people in the bar. I don't know any of them. And they thought 
I was a ringer, a professional that pretended I was an amateur just to win the hundred dollars. <laughs> I bought everyone jokes and still went home with about six sixty-five dollars. Everyone jokes, everyone drinks. <laughs>